Well, hello. This is probably going to be one of the most daunting, perplexing, and maybe even scary part of the van build, and that is the electrical. Uh, the, the daunting part of it is is knowing wire sizes, fuses, uh, switches, all that stuff, and where especially are you going to put all of these components, such as your 12 volt uh, fuse box, your DC to DC charger, uh, all that stuff is really complicated. And but if you watch, like I did, a ton of great YouTube videos out there showing their wiring diagrams, their setups, and all their fuses and breakers. Uh, and how they did it, uh, it's going to be really helpful for you. So, um, what this is not going to include is uh, my solar setup. Uh, that's going to be a whole separate video for this because I got to go up and mount the solar panels. There'll be two of them on the ceiling, on the roof rather, and uh, also bringing them down to this uh, charge controller and to my batteries. Uh, what else you won't see is I have. A, and I just got it so um, this won't be sorry about that what it is is a a voltmeter and this is made by a company called Q work I think uh, somebody named Ali makes it also uh, it's an inexpensive uh, voltage amperage meter I was going to go with the Victron 712 is it but it was over 200 and some dollars you can purchase this and I'll put a link below for anywhere between 40 and 45 dollars make sure though when you get it see if you can find it that has this is called the negative shunt this is what it all hooks up to and this has to be um, mounted somewhere near your battery uh, it goes on the, uh, the negative battery line and uh, it did not have a kind of mount so I went to Home Depot I bought a kind of a wall plate not a metal one a plastic hard plastic one and I just cut it and uh, screwed it through the bottom of that and then I'll, I'll place this on my uh, on the plywood back here where I can do it the other thing that doesn't come with of course you got to get back into these large cables this is going to be uh, negative to, from your battery negative to your negative bus bar. Uh, also, it has to have a, which doesn't come with it, is a power supply. And that'll hook into the shunt also and go directly to your battery for power. I, put, I got one that had a little uh, breaker in it and I think I have like a 5, five amp breaker in there just in case. So, it comes also with not only the pigtail, it's about gosh I don't know maybe 18 inches off the back but it comes with a 13 foot extension because the actual amp meter volt the voltage meter is going to be mounted somewhere above my driver's side cabinet on the wall there so I can look at all my gauges up there so that's why this will come in handy uh, like I said, uh, it won't be part of this video installing that, but you'll probably at some point see this in it. So, other than that, let's get into this uh, wiring and doing the electric. All right, yeah. this is basically what I need for right now. I have two 100 foot spools of 14 gauge copper strand wire, uh, some wire clippers, a marker to mark what each end is on the blue tape, and some conduit. Let me give you a basic, basic layout of what I'm going to do. Of course, driver's side, passenger side. On the driver's side, down along this area here, there's going to be a wood paneling up there. There's also a box that's going to be over the wheel well that I think you saw in a previous video. This is where, let's call this where all the power is going to come from. So every bit of the power that runs around and the wires are all going to come from that area. It's going to come from the battery, through all the fuses, to the bus bars, up to a 12 volt fuse panel, and then run up and around to my appropriate uh, electrical components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm first thing I'm going to wire 
is I'll probably come right straight down through here with my Max air fan and keep everything behind the wall. So that's where it's going to start and then I'll probably run the wire all the way around. So I'm going to be doing my puck lights in parallel. So let's get started. I am 90% done with the pre-wiring and just in time because I have went through two spools which is uh, black and red but that's a hundred feet of 14 gauge wire can you believe it a hundred feet through here and I'm probably gonna need uh, maybe another 20 feet I don't know we'll see because that's gonna just be to some extra auxiliary lines that I'm going to run through here just in case someday down the road I want to add something new but so you know we started off I marked every end both ends this is going to my max air fan uh, you can see that this is going to be to my lights number two which means that that is the two pug lights that I'm going to put over the bed and that also goes down to the power everything down here will run through my 12 volt blue C fuse panel and then of course to the battery and all that so um, I've got a wire coming up two wires coming up here from the power going I snaked it all the way through the top here coming down and I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this because I might put this behind a wheel well because believe it or not a couple of these places don't actually go through so you be aware of that that some of these do not go through especially over here by the door this does not come down through that's because the sliding door is in between there so anything you want to do from there you're going to have to come up from the floor up or from here yeah from this side panel down but you can't come from the top down so that's going to be okay with me because i'm just going to hide these behind here and uh, this is going to be my switch to my um and my main line going up to my four pug lights on a dimmer that are up here both the bedroom lights and the four lights up here are going to be on dimmers uh, i just ran uh, two wires coming down here through here and these ended up over here behind the driver's seat because there's going to be a cabinet here and uh, this is going to be where probably my dometic 12 volt uh, refrigerator cooler is going to be so that's going to plug into a dc outlet and that's going to be a combination dc outlet and usb port i don't really need a usb port i mean this vehicle has numerous usb ports on them but you know so i don't have to climb up front i'll put it there it came in a combination thing so i might as well do it so there we go it looks kind of intimidating but once you get started on it uh, as long as you keep all the wires down behind the walls and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and uh, I'm going to run over to Harbor Freight because they have this big package of uh, I want to get some more of this conduit and I also want to get some grommets that I'm just going to splice you know down the middle so I can fit them into a lot of these uh, not so round holes and uh, then maybe just glue them to the sides and that way I'm not chafing the wire which is real important because these are sharp sharp edges so what's next well i'm going to do that conduit i'm going to do the grommets and then i'm going to run my well stay tuned for that that's a whole that's my first component of the whole battery system so we'll get to that in a bit
One of the more challenging things to do is working with this 200 amp system coming from the battery. It's working with this two aug 200 amp wire, which is heavy and hardly can bend it. But anyway, so what I got to do is uh, I start here. This will come off the top of my battery. This will be attached to that wheel well of mine. This is a 200 amp fuse uh, coming up then to my on off switch. My on off switch goes to my positive bus bar. Now all the power will come into there. So out of here, I will be running my 12 volt fuse box, my DC to DC charger, and my solar power will come in there. As far as the inverter goes, um, I'll work on that later. We'll probably have to come off uh, with a separate wire to the inverter when I eventually put that in. But I'm going to go ahead and get this attached and start running, I think my uh, DC to DC. Uh, this is a 20 amp DC to DC uh, uh, battery charger. So I'm gonna have to run that. I'm gonna run a number four gauge wire, two 30 amp fuses on both the in and the out section. And also on this side here, there is a little plus D called, and whereas that going, that has to go to my ignition switch. Uh, so when I turn the uh, van on, <clears throat> uh, it starts charging the batteries, and when I turn it off, it stops right there. And this will also regulate the flow of current coming into right. the battery. I'm pretty much uh, done with wiring um, as far as where everything's gonna go through the walls and all that. I've got my paint main power supply, everything going. Let me go over this real quickly with you, what I have done. First of all, I'm running off of a Renogy 12 volt, 100 amp hour AGM deep cycle battery. Now I'm gonna have two of these and I'll run red to red, and, uh, positive, positive, negative to negative to uh, run them in parallel. I'll still have 12 volt system, but I'll have 200 amp hours at that point. So I came up with my 2 slash 0 2 AUG or whatever it's called um, cable wire. I went into on the positive side a 200 amp breaker, not a breaker, but a fuse, uh, and then going into the on off switch. From there, I go into my positive bus bar. And now coming back up through the negative side, I got a negative coming up through there and going directly to my negative bus bar. From there, it runs down into my fuse panel, uh, which I have 12. Actually, I got a 50 amp breaker coming into the positive off of the um, positive bus bar into the fuse box and then of course off of the negative bus bar into the fuse box but right now I just have it hooked up to my fan this wire here is going to my water pump I've got back lights on a dimmer I got four lights um, on the front part of the van here on a dimmer also I've got an auxiliary here which is just extra in case I want to put something I'm also running from back here to here will be, this is going to be a cabinet here, and I'm going to have a 12 volt outlet, probably for a refrigerator, hopefully that Dometic 12 volt one. The combination 12 volt receptacle and a dual um, USB port. I want to show you also, I ran a 20 amp DC to DC battery charger. Now what that is, is my battery is located under the floor here. So I hooked up a, a number four gauge wire to the positive and to the negative, and I ran that back through my seat, under my seat, and up into a 30 amp fuse here, going into the charger, coming out of the charger into another 30, 30, excuse me, 30 amp fuse here, coming through the uh, um, positive and negative bus bars, through the switch again, and into my battery. Now that is going to charge my battery when the car, the van is running. But in order to do that, 
you'll see this little red wire here. This little red wire is going to a switch. I put this switch here, it just kind of, there's a hole here, so I've made it so I can just reach around and turn it on. That switch goes to the D, D plus, and underneath this panel, there's what they call upfitters. And it's a, a 12 volt ignition, uh, type of power source and what I do is uh, when the car starts uh, it sends uh, power through there and it gets this battery charger going now it runs off the alternator in the battery so I didn't want to have to turn the car on <coughs> and have that immediately hit my alternator I like it to the alternator to start up run a little bit run the belts whatever and then slip uh, switch this uh, switch on right here and then turn it on once it's turned on you know your battery is being charged by that green light that comes on right there and that's the d plus part right here where it, it plugs into so right now that's my first only way to charge my battery uh, of course i'm going to have solar coming down this portion and into a, a charge controller and I'll also have just a not through the van but a, a, a shore power type of uh, charge too. So I'll have three different ways to charge it. Primary one will be solar of course. So that's my power system. I will go into electric a little bit more when I start hooking up my lights, my water pump, my switches and all that good stuff. So. It seems perplexing. It was, I think the main part of it was where to situate all this stuff and where to put it and where it, these bending, these uh, big giant cables here was just a bear. So, you know, that, that was probably the most difficult part of it. Once you get it down and you start working on it and you, you uh, make your own cables and put your own lugs in and it, it starts to move along pretty nice. You get a lot of satisfaction rather when you turn something on it actually works anyway guys that is probably will do it for my wiring portion of this video and i uh, hope you got something out of it i think this is a good setup that i have one thing one more thing when doing this you kind of wonder you know what type of fuses to use uh, what type of wire just remember use in my opinion whatever wire you're using gauge your fuse or your breaker to that for example um, coming into here i've got a uh, number six gauge wire and i think the maximum uh, for copper wire on a short distance like that is around 50 amps so i have a 50 amp breaker there i know there's 200 amp breaker here i know coming in here that i'm only running a 20 amp charge thing here so i put a 30 amp on both sides but that's number four gauge wire so i'm running my fuses or my breakers according to my wire size not according to the items that i have on here so it helped me out doing that so i think um, that's the my opinion the safest way to do these things okay moment of truth Ugh. i know this looks like a mess here but only me the mad scientist <laughs> knows what's going on so i got my first component, electrical component hooked up, and that is my Max Air Fan. So I am going to leave it up to you, honey, to, to, do, the to do the honors. Go ahead. Hi, Jay. I think there's over here the controls. It says on and off. Uh oh. <gasps> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you did it! Wow. I make magic! <laughs> cool.